Gonna say he'll never get there. And you? What do you do? Mm, it's a bit complicated to explain. Hey, hey. You know, I still didn't get exactly what your job is. That's what I do. New Renault Arcana E-Tech Hybrid from 299 euro per month on the road. Winner Irish Medium Crossover SUV in the 2022 Car of the Year Awards. Just remember that, man. There's a small bit of a needle there. Oh, come on, Mayo, you've got to get Andy Moran into the game. Our mission was to show that we're no longer the whipping boys of Munster. Hello, everybody. Uh, how are you all doing? You're welcome along to the Irishman's podcast in association with Renault. Thanks so much to Renault. We had a few you know, ambassadors here uh, last Thursday evening after around the golf in Dumbeg. So we finalized the deal there. Uh, so <laughs> thanks to Petty and Sue. Uh, always great, great um, sponsors for us down through the years. So delighted um, to with us. Um, morning, lads. Dreary old morning up here in Clare. Hopefully it'll be a bit brighter uh, next Monday. But um, not much action <laughs> to talk about. I think it's fair to say. I wasn't as unpopular on Twitter since I joined it. In fact, <laughs> uh, our special guest today in the community hall in Bellin Hinch, I'd say I wasn't as hated in tips since the Whip and Boys of Munster in Cork 25 years ago. Maybe not, Dale, I don't know. Uh, I was at the match. I was one of the 24 Tipperary fans that actually went to the match with 27,000 oh, yeah. people there yesterday. So I think that's something we can definitely talk about. But look, Dale, as, as I think everyone's entitled to an opinion in the world. Uh, I think maybe some of them shouldn't be. Maybe their opinion should be taken off and give it to another person. But look, so that's the way it is. I tell you, if you if you were making everyone happy, you wouldn't be doing it right. I put it you like that. Yeah, and if you, as I always say, if you enlist, you must drill, Marco. And uh, I can't be giving out about getting a bit of stick on Twitter. Now the private messages and the personal level, I could do without. To be honest, uh, I don't be blocking people, but faces yeah. people sending private dirty old messages, or uh, I could do without. That is any game of hurling. As we said I tell you now, Dana, last week, I think it, there's bigger things happening in the world. It's a fantastic situation not to be on Twitter. Landers not on Twitter will be remaining as much and all as the fans out there want me to go on Twitter. I said no go for me, kid. I just I, I like to when I turn off the phone at night, Dale, I like to see there's no messages in the morning, like you know. Particularly the yeah. hate bitches as they like, but you need your oh sleep because they're usually usually putting up messages on our page here at about a minute past <clears throat> yeah. six and stuff like that. But uh, well, yeah, your, my notifications last night from Twitter alone nearly used up all my battery. So anyway, that's <laughs> I suppose because handy you're being in the studio, I think with your end and then be doing co comments better because you'll have to call things as you see them. But uh, anyways, um. Great crowd, lads. Munster Council, like I said, will be thrilled with it. Uh, I think as John Fogarty pointed out today, I mean, 30,000 for a game that a lot of people didn't feel, but as Shane pointed out, TJ, poor enough tip contingent. Surprising, like, really, because you know, they played well against Watford. Clear game was very disappointing from a tip point of view at home in Turles. But still, you know, I think Cullum was dealt a tough enough hand coming in yesterday, despite all that was missing over the last couple of months. Then to be down, James Quigley and Jason Ford as well, and um, but he was thrown in the young fellas. He had named his team, and you know, a lot of young names there. And uh, I was looking forward to seeing them. And I thought and most of them acquitted themselves very well. But it's disappointing to see the tip turn out. Yeah, it came in a strange feel from the word go. Even walking in the road to the game from from town, it kind of had a league feeling to it, or whatever. From maybe that buzzed up championship feel wasn't there, and. I know someone has even referenced maybe the Limerick sideline weren't as buzzed up as they have been in the last two games. And, you know, maybe there's a case you could say that maybe the Limerick team played accordingly early doors. But, you know, I was sitting with Steve McDonough before the game and we were chatting and we were looking at the Tipperary team and we were saying, just going back to our own days, that look, sometimes, let's say the ball wasn't rolling for us, we got beaten or whatever, and you got to go and face maybe Tip, who might have been favourites for the month's championship at Ireland at the time. And you'd say that you'd galvanise within your squad and within the dressing room and we were expecting Tip to do that that was the realistic view that's, that's all Tip could do was to go and try and 
galvanise it, put in a performance, and have a cut. And I'd have to say they did that. Like, and looking through their team individually, they're still very strong. There's all Ireland winners in there. There's Fitzgibbon Cup. There's county champions in there. So there's a lot of winners in that in that Tipperary team, and they played accordingly. Because in fairness, some good stickmen. But I'd have to say that strategically and tactically, with the puck out, with the way they position themselves, with the with, with, with the with the man marking situation. Like, I have to say, Cullum got an awful lot right here, right? And it proved that early doors in terms of the structure of his team, what he was trying to do. Um, and, and, and I would say, like, definitely for the first half there, you know, he would have been very happy. I, I suppose there's loads of stuff we can look at from the game and we'll have a chat about. But one of the real interesting stats for me was at the end of the game was that Tipperary had more shots than Limerick. Mm. That's an unusual uh, stat against a Limerick team. They usually outshoot the opponents. And I'm not sure, maybe Shane might have the percentages of it, but uh, like for me, the team that has the most shots, I'd say 90 odd percent of games win. They win. So, that, yeah, they win. So that, 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 that'll even tell you. And, you know, I think in fairness to Callum afterwards, and in fairness to both Noel McGrath, his interview and Callum, I think I thought they were very straight and very honest. And I think Callum's, I suppose, discussion piece around the goals, the goal chances Limerick got versus the goal chances Tip got, that probably was the difference at the end of the day. Yeah, we don't normally expect Limerick to be relying on the goals uh, to get them out of the... You know, normally no. you see Limerick hitting 31 points maybe and the other crowd hitting two something. Yeah, um, no, in fairness to Limerick, they, st- they still hit 321, which is your 30 points, which is great. And in fairness to Limerick, say, they, they definitely the feeling within the stand once you got to maybe 60 minutes plus. Like on 60 minutes, we were one point down, then we leveled it up. And when Davy Reedy put us ahead in the 65th minute, you always had the feeling that you'd go on and win the game. And in fairness to them, let's say, like I, th- I, th- I think you said on, on commentary, uh, you would have been happy enough with you on commentary and like, hello, no problem for and I watched the game back last night. Bad enough uh, <laughs> no, 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 none of your comments uh, seem to rub us up the wrong way. But a, a good sign of champions is that let's say whether whatever your opinion is, whether Limerick were a tad off, whether they weren't as built up for the game as they should have been, or whether you credit Tipperary with the way they set up, right? Like a, the true sign of a good team and champions is on a day when it doesn't roll maybe as smoothly and your flow isn't what it is that you still come out and win the game and you still came away seven point winners which look from John's point of view before the game there was no guarantees when you had four points at least now he has the guarantee whilst Munster final isn't guaranteed yet like he has the guarantee that he's qualified and I think he'll be very happy with that to be in, to be in the next phase Yeah they're plus 21 as well so it's like probably an unusual turn of events maybe for them not to be in it you know because yeah. obviously Waterford would have to come to us and win and and that would be inflicting pain on the Clare scoring difference and it was a funny it would be a funny sequence of events if they're not in the Munster final at this stage which which he'd be happy with Shane you travelled anyway fair play Joe <coughs> bring the sandwiches yeah. um, no as I said <laughs> well, you we were have, at the tennis club yeah? we've discovered a new <laughs> culture in the Limerick Lawn Tennis Club uh, fantastic establishment there uh, you were you got a pint in a glass and everything uh, up to a certain time. I thought it was brilliant. So very enjoyable time. Went in, myself and my my current wife, uh, Joanne, and uh, met uh, a couple of buddies there, actually Limerick lads. So I, wouldn't, uh, I was I was sporting a, not a Tipperary jersey, yesterday, but very much Tipperary colours, a Baca Juniors top, Dela, uh, <laughs> blue and gold. There's a big uh, tip connection there of Baca Juniors. I think a priest back in the time was involved in uh, farm and the club, Baca Juniors, fame for Diego Maradona and all these lads. That's cool, yeah. So there you go. So, uh, Lunatics, do no, you no, ever get over there uh, for a game, no? Oh, I was there. I was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some spot. Yeah. Um, what, went, what goes on in South America has to stay in South America. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's the easiest way to say it. But uh, yes, no, look, know, was... the school holidays now, you see, Dela, when you have a couple of months off during the summer and you've no Holland during the summer as well, you get plenty of time to go away. Like, you know, that's it. That's it. But come here, um, Mark, on the CEO farm, there is no discrimination and anyone can become a primary school teacher or a teacher of any farm if you wish. And it's never too late either. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's a, yeah, you, you could be. You could be like the Kilkenny County Board there about 15 years ago. They had a message on their website. If you are a national school teacher and you're teaching outside the county, would you please drop into CV and we'll bring you home? Did you get Did you get one of them, uh, Shane? Or did I you qualify actually, straight away? I actually gave most of my education life uh, in, in Limerick. Limerick. Yeah. Uh, between LIT, Mary I, and I gave nearly 10 years in Listen to Grey, School of Dan and Tom Morrissey. So I, I met you there, didn't I? I, I, I was actually... <laughs> 
I actually learned it, learned it all in Limerick, and I'm bringing it back to Tip now. So, cool, man. What, what, course, play, what course did you start doing in an LIT, Shane? That well, I gave, I, I gave five years doing a four-year course, Dela. <laughs> so you could do the maths on that. Uh, I, did account, uh, I, I did accounting and finance. We had, a, we had a good old Fitzgibbon team there at the time, and uh, did that, and then went back and did the postgraduate course in Mary Ice. So there you go. There's my educational uh, life. And, uh, and, and, uh, and Shane, I heard you're back in Limerick doing a small bit of coaching very close to my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> don't help it out yet. Don't help it out. Yeah, good I, I, I heard there, guys. Yeah, your brother Tony and myself had a good chat there recently, actually, about it. So looking forward to that. Yeah, new, a new chat. Well, you said near your hometown, uh, TJ. So where, where is he? He's straight in the middle of Naklang and Kilmallock. Okay. He's in Martinstown, the great Stakers oh, yeah. Club. Oh, God, yeah. fair play. Boy, God, I got Shane. Why? Huh? Yeah, Pete. Oh, yes, 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 I got I know, I last know, night on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, draw your own conclusions. Huh? <laughs> fair play, fair play. Nice facilities. Don't forget us. Sure. Don't, don't forget us now for a couple of tickets for Cheltenham next year, Shane. <laughs> no matter, Mark. <laughs> we'll be a plus one. <laughs> yeah. Well, Shane, we'd, we'd party my heart giving out about the, the yeah. support. It was, it was um, I was walking up along and I was in to see the second half of the Camogie. Um, Great win there for Clare. Just a little shout out for them. Uh, they've worked so hard at all levels, and Clare trying to get up to the standard and junior and senior monster finals now to look forward to. Just want to give them a shout out. Uh, Connor Dole and John Carmody, Brendan Foley, all the lads involved. Um, to be tip, I suppose, is a kind of a milestone for them now. They have to face into Cork, of course, which will be a different proposition, but uh, they've met already this year. So look, I just I was in for that, but a tip man stopped me outside the little garage there just as I'm walking up on the Ennis Road and asked me to stand in with two young fellas, nice men, chat them for a minute or two and, and uh, I said, are you the only three here, lads? No, I know that was the <laughs> other side of the ground, but uh, it was the Ennis side, obviously, put in and the Cardavan side. It was a very slack Tipperary support. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I wonder they were all giving out about me because they were all listening to me, obviously, sitting at home. <laughs> <in the pub. laughs> I, uh, look, I think there was... Bef- before the game yesterday, um, 20, up, upwards of 26,000 tickets sold. Um, I just don't know. I don't know how many tip fans there were there yesterday. I'd say a couple of thousand maybe, you know, and I think there was over, I think the official attendance was over 27,000 or something like that. And, you know, I just I just think even for the players, like even as a player, um, and we'll talk about the match in a second, but I'm just talking about as players, like, I mean, what they put into it and everything like that. And it's, it's, it's embarrassing for them, like, to be out in the field yesterday and get a score or something like that and hear an old clatter of applause around the place. But then you'll go home then and they'll, 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 the first ones will come and give out you and say something that won't even have been at the game. For example, right, you take Dylan Quirk there now yesterday, okay? Dylan Quirk might have hit the ball twice or three times with his hurley. But the job he did on Kyle Hayes was phenomenal. He followed him everywhere. He did everything he could just to try and stop Kyle being a massive influence in the game. But the people who weren't at the game won't see that, let's. They're just, they'll be watching on the telly, they'll, they'll, they'll watch the, the highlights, they'll, they'll watch all these things, but they won't see the tankless running yeah. he did, what he did. He sacrificed his game for the team. And like, I just think even as players and talking to one of the players, even this morning, like, I mean, it, it's not good enough for them. Like, and I, I was even talking to TJ beforehand, like even, even when Limerick, when, when things weren't going great for them, there were days there when we played Limerick in Turles and there was more <laughs> Limerick fans there than Tip. So I just think Paddy was dead right with his tweet. And if anyone has the right to tweet about it, it's Paddy Maher, like, you know, one of the all-time greats for us. But if anything comes of this, like, I mean, there has to be a bigger crowd at home in our last game against Cork. Result aside or whatever it might be, it, it was, we're, we're, we're not in it for moral victories, lads. None of us, none of us um, in, in any of our counties, we're not. But we were so proud of him coming away yesterday. Like, given everything that's gone on, given everything we've lost, again, it, it, it's, we're not in it for moral victories, but up to 62 minutes, it's a draw game. They died with their boots on. They gave everything they had. What experience it has been for the lesser-known tiplets. You know what I mean? For the Connor Stakelums, for Dylan Quirk, Gerald Brown, for Craig Morgan and these lads. The experience they got there yesterday at home against the best team in the country for the last five, six years. And to stand up to it for the majority of the game is brilliant. So I just hope that the Tipperary people do get behind the crowd, do get behind them now the next day, let's, and go to the stadium and support them against Cork. And, and, don't, and, and don't let it be more Cork people than Tip people be there the next day because the, the players deserve that. The group deserve that. And I, I, I just think that fans in inverted commas, they need to come out now and, 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 and really support the team the next day and, and show them that they're behind them. Like that's, 
yeah, that, well, that'd be true, my take on it. Like, you know. true, true supporters are thick and thin. There's no doubt about that. And in fairness to the Limerick supporters, and even in my own time in charge, Shane, when things definitely weren't, and we might be hard to listen to now, Marco, uh, all, all over the country, Limerick people, we're, we, we're certainly enjoying it. But in fairness, like we we went to Turles in the past, and in fairness to the Limerick crowd, they were unbelievably supportive and vocal. And I think even once or twice, maybe in the early 90s, when things were, were struggling, I think we even outnumbered tip supporters in Turles once or oh, twice. Like it was yeah. so mad. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, to, to be fair to the Limerick supporters, through good times and in bad, and like that's why they're fully entitled to what's happening at the moment, and we'll continue to enjoy the moment. But that, that, that is the scenario with them. Yeah, and in yeah. fairness, I'd say a good few of them were probably in the Viva on Saturday supporting Munster. And in fairness, they still turn out on on, on the Sunday. So I think there was nearly forty thousand people in the Viva. Yeah. And I know the argument is there, lads. Some people might say, <clears throat> I have three or four kids and it's 25 euro a ticket and all that. We understand that, like, but there's the world of people who have no kids. And, you know, mm-hmm. and they could be at the matches too, like, and, and while it's, I think it's just, I say, since I became a parent myself, I just can't wait for the day that we're able to bring the, the kiddies to the matches. Yeah. I think, it's, well, I think it's brilliant to see it now. It's, it's, uh, it's, yes, it's only a fiver for the kids now, in fairness, so, which, which yeah, is yeah. good for Munster Council. Uh, exactly, so, yeah. I know. Kudos to the Munster yeah. Council for that too. But look, that's, that's, I think, Paddy put up the tweet, but I think it was felt everywhere yesterday. It, um, we need to get behind the team. We need to show our support for the team. Um, and, all, and, and, and I'm sure every county is the same. Like, you know, if you want to support your team, there's going to be good times, but there are going to be a lot of bad times too. So we need to get behind them and, and show the support for them. Like. Yeah, even like I just, you just feel there was a hard core, even there was missing. I think Claire often would dwindle low enough when things would be going bad, but there was, there was a hard core that you could rely on. To be there, you know, and, and <clears throat> maybe they, they, they were even missing. And on the back of a week where your minors are gone into the Munster minor final with a huge win against Waterford and will be favourites, I presume, against Clare, they've beaten them already. And your 20s were heroic against Limerick. And I thought, like, Cullum named the team, and I thought those young guys were, were desperate manly, as you said, the Dylan, Dylan Quirks and the Connor Statons and all. The, and yes, you had the, the soldiers that have given all those fans so much, like Noel. Ronan, I thought very strong. Jamie Kennedy, Do you know. So for me, it's disappointing. Um, but look, that's something. I suppose this maybe there was a little bit of a shadow hanging over tape <coughs> since the Liam Cahill decision and whatever non-decision, I suppose really. But um, yeah, you'll be hopeful that for the Cork game that they will turn out at home, and uh, definitely we'll be hoping to see that. Mark, but Dela, was it Dela? But Dela, sorry, Dela. Before you go into the well, game, like it was a massive performance out of Tipperary. And as Shane right, said, like, the game was level going into the last 10 minutes, like, and I know Limerick was starting to come, but Tipperary were magnificent just in the, in the performance and what they produced. And, like, their form has been up and down, played well enough against Waterford, wouldn't be happy with the way they played against, um, against Clare the last day. But maybe Clare now, they are better than probably we're giving them credit for as well. Like, so, like, the Clare Limerick game is going to take on a new life of its own because. They're the two top teams in the league at the moment. And um, that'll be a very interesting game. But just, I have to say, on the overall game itself, you know, before we go into analyse it, is that I thought Tip were really, really good just today. And obviously the fact that Limerick finished it out very, very strong, showed how good they are from a champion's point of view. But, you know, like the future is very bright for Tipperary. And, you know, Colin Bonner, I suppose, has been given the duty now of bringing through these young lads and blending him in with the older lads, the likes of the Noahs and the Ronans and Kahal Barrett's and stuff like that, you know. So, you know, I think tip of an awful lot to 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 be happy with yesterday. And I just hope from a cock point of view that the last game won't be a dead rubber game. That, you know, there certainly was a part of me watching the match yesterday that said, you know what, we're going to Waterford next Sunday. We have to win. We have to get the players to die in their boots to get a performance and get a victory. Because if we don't, the season is over for the Cork players. So there were the thoughts that were running through my head. So, you know, I'm putting a question there. Cork, not to be looking forward too much with the Sean yeah. and Garvin, but Cork have to kind of bring to water what Tip brought to Limerick yesterday, isn't it? It's not a rocket but, science. Dela, the, 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 there's no... Like, you, me, TJ have been banging this drum since the league final. We thought there was going to be a reaction against Limerick. We got it for five minutes at the start of the game. We said we'd definitely get a reaction the last day against Clare. Didn't get like find us as eleven points down after twenty five minutes. I mean, what more can the play? What more can the management do? I mean, surely the players have got to say to themselves if they have any bit of pride in themselves that they'll come out with all guns blazing against against Waterford. Like, 
Shane. Sorry there, lads. Like, there's a fella here to check the ESP box. Two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> It's not coming in. Have a go. I will carry him down the mat. I will carry him down the mat, sir. I said the lad. He's just gone, actually. I was kind of trying to speed him up, Connor, Connor Clune. The sound man, I said, Connor, you're really right. But uh, you, you delayed us in a mark with your Wi Fi issues like every week. Same well, time. that is that is a big shock to me, Dale, or that it wasn't you doing three, sun, three Mondays in a row with a problem with Wi Fi. Like, <laughs> TJ, you really shocked me. Back to Limerick's performance. Davy touched on it last night. I suppose that he thought in general he watched them closely. The mentors against um, against Cork in particular, I suppose, and against Waterford. And he thought they were flat on the line. There was a general kind of a not talking much, not shouting much. Colin Bonner was very animated, obviously. Um, very flat in the first half. I saw William O'Donoghue running out to John Kiley asking him something. The two hands were out. At one stage, Joe Brown got a puck out in what you'd call Shane O'Donnell Acres' face against Cork. And um, I see Decky Hannon and, and Dermot Burns having a few words with each other. So there was a, there was a general kind of a sense, and John Kiley touched on it in his interview as well, that, that we that exactly what he said. It, it was off puck outs. Uh, we just struggled with that for a while, and it's only in the second half we got on top of it. So um, it's hard to know. Was it just an attitude, listening to it all the week, that you're going to win and win a bit easy? And it just gets through, I suppose, at times. I think you could say, yeah, there's a factor of it. And, and I was behind uh, Paul and, and John yesterday again. And I suppose they probably wanted the team to try and get into their flow, get into their stride. You know, they had put two good performances together already. They wanted that to continue. Um, early doors, certainly the, the passing and maybe that work rate and intensity didn't seem to be where it was. But... A games can be funny, right? And where once we spoke about this condensed, mad middle third, right? There's a little bit of a change happening in the game in that teams are maybe trying to expose space in the middle third a bit more. To be fair to Tip, what they tried to do is they, they, they pull their midfielders up into their own half back line to kind of leave space in the middle of the field. Limerick likes structurally to leave five, six, and seven zonal and not get pulled all over the place. And they were finding a bit of gaps of space between the midfield halfbacks and their half forward line. And in fairness to the keeper, he was finding them. That was successful for Tip. The way Tip set up as well, I felt that structurally and organised, they were all on the same page. They had man marking jobs, or let's say Ronan had set up inside. Barry Heffern knew what he was doing. And even when there was fellas jumping across the field, they were handing off well. So they had started well. And it looked like as if the study they had done was quite good. They had played Marco kind of inside, maybe one inside initially to kind of get a grip with that half forward line. And their work rate was up. So I think it's a little bit of both. How much of a factor either side, I don't know. Were Limerick a tad off? Yes. Were Tipperary very structured, very organised? They didn't take the ball into contact as much as maybe a team would. Their stick work was very good. Their passing was very good. And I thought that in general what they were trying to do was very effective. So it, it's a little bit of both. Okay. Okay. Shane, on that, like you saw a structure there. Joe Brown definitely was key to the movement and uh, he would not stay where Burnsy wanted him to stay, let's say. And uh, mm. then, <clears throat> did they struggle a bit? Did you think would normally then, of course, it's handed over to a half forward coming back. Like I would have said it was the quietest game we've seen in a long, long time from William O'Donoghue and Darrow Donovan. And yeah. you'd say maybe tip were more prominent around the middle. I I I thought Darren Donovan was good now. Um I personally I thought he he wasn't Stronger at his best, but he you know he got his two points. I think he I think he picked up a yellow as well. But he he's he he's he is becoming for Limerick and I think for a lot of people top class midfielder. Um I know he got his all-star last year, but I think for a long time he was doing a lot of just easy, simple things for Limerick and maybe wasn't getting always recognised, but I, I think he's been really good. I, I thought he was by far the best. Um, uncharacteristic, we'll have done who I just noted that as well. After 12 minutes gone, comes out to the sideline looking for advice. Very rarely you see that, you know, maybe just one of those days. I think the way Tip, the tip played, like, I thought, I, I thought now, genuinely, the first, the first play of the game, right, Joe Brown scored a goal against G. Dalo. He probably ran maybe 50, 55 yards. And I was saying to someone at the game, I was just saying, like, if, if, if Joe Brown tries that against Limerick, he could end up in the regional hospital handy enough, right? And he, the first run he did, and I think it was Decky Hannon making with a dunt, and I thought, ooh, he's going to be shook now. 
But Joe Brown scored three points from play in the first half. He had two wides, and I think he was involved in another three points. So, like, there was a lad playing with confidence now yesterday. And anyone that knows about Joe Brown from club hurling or from underage hurling is particularly, he's a confidence player. If he starts well, he'll have a super game. And I thought he had a super first half, maybe just died out a bit of it. He was moving everywhere. Connor Stakelum, no more so than your own man, maybe Robin, Robin Mundy Jane, or Robin Mundy. Yeah, TJ, yeah. Just take it there. In, in fairness to Joe Brown, his movement was very good, but you'd have to credit the boys too. They were finding him. The stick passing and getting the ball to him was very good. That yeah. probably was the piece that I think was better than it has been in the past. They like The movement might have been there, but they weren't finding him. I thought they found him really well in the first half. Ah, yeah. They, they was heads up hurling. Look, and I think you, you've talked about it, lads. Our, our, our puck outs yesterday were top class. They really, really were. Like, I mean, Brian, Brian is a great goalie, you know, and he was in goals against Waterford. Maybe, maybe the lads were looking to go route one and Brian would have a ferocious puck out. But Barry Hogan, lads, he would put it on a sixpence for you. He would put it into your mouth every single time. And he was able to ping lads 40, 45 yards out the field, straight ball to head. And as you said, TJ, it was heads up hurling in from lads who were comfortable on the ball. Like Craig is comfortable yeah. on the ball. Ronan is comfortable on the ball. When Cahill got the ball, he's comfortable on the ball. Dylan was doing his job. You know, he was he was marking Kyle Hayes. Shamie Kendi was comfortable on the ball. So they were able to find Joe Brown. Connor Stakelham, as I was going to say, Delo, he was he's kind of an unknown for us in a lot of places. And and I say a lot of other guys are trying maybe still trying to figure him out, no more so than your own Robin Robin Munsey or Robin Munsey, uh, what Munsey. pronounce his name right. Do you know what I mean? Like and he he got on a, he was involved in a lot of good things there yesterday for tip and worked ferociously hard. Like Noel, stuck Noel in, really like, good in the threes, getting stuck in, you know. Jake, physical attack. Jake got three points from play, you know, got on, got on a lot of ball as well. Um, Paul Flynn, you know, he scored a point from play, but I suppose did some good things. But, you know, there, I suppose, when you're talking about being clinical and Colin Bonner's talking about taking the goal chances, you're talking about the clinicalness of the John McGraths and the Shane McCallans of this world, maybe, that if one or two of them goal chances fell to those lads, Maybe it's a different story, but that's ifs and buts, you know what I mean? But I thought, look, there was a ferocious work rate. I thought it was so close, Les, even at half time. Limerick nine wides, tip ten wides. It's it's one nine to fourteen. It was very, very tit for tat, you know. There, there, there was nothing in it. I just I think for the rest of the country, lads, for Limerick, it's brilliant. I agree totally with what you said, TJ. I think it's a great sign of a champions, great sign of a sign of a great team is winning a match that they're not maybe very dominant in or playing very well in. But I admired a few things about them yesterday. I thought the belief in their system is unbelievable and the belief and trust that they have in each other is unreal. That they're, they're not, they don't waver for anything. There's, fair enough, they come out a couple of times and ask a few questions, but they trust each other so much and they trust the system so much that they know eventually things are going to come right. And eventually things did come right from, from the 62nd minute on. Okay. The other thing is, we're all, we, and m- myself included, we have said that maybe one of the best panels in the country was Watford, bench-wise. And I tell you, I think Limerick have... Limerick have changed that now again from yesterday. Like, I mean, Conor Byland, he, he, he couldn't buy a possession against Waterford, but he came on yesterday. He won a free, he scored a goal. He was a nightmare. Shamie Flanagan comes on. He was rusty, first game in six weeks. Oshin Riley comes on. Like, no matter what Oshin does, everyone that knows him, he takes mind in because he's so busy. He's flying around the place. Someone has to run around after him. And I thought David Reedy was very, very solid when he came on. So that's Limerick's bench are very, very good. Um, as I said, the system that they have. But I, I, I just feel for the rest of the country, it's bad. Because I, I think that that might be the blip, and they still won. Like I think that imagine imagine how happy John Kiley is, lads. You've all been involved in management. You've all been involved in in managing inter county teams and been involved in inter county teams. Like what a place John Kiley is in now. Three wins from three, still not happy, still not good enough. Dan Morrissey, you might have to play now against Clare because that wasn't good enough yesterday. William Donahue, do you want to be midfield or is David Reedy going to start? You might have to play against Clare. Do you know what I mean? You're looking down. Graham Mull worked very hard. You know, Kyle, you know, Kyle, you weren't your normal influential self there yesterday. And, and, and it's a stick to beat them with. So I think, like, what a position they're in. For the rest of us, it's bad. I also think, TJ, I agree with you. I think the, the thing is changing a small bit. I think Tipperary managed that kind of middle third a bit better, maybe by creating a bit more space in a TJ, rather than going, there's no point in going man on man and going to war with them there, because that's not going to work. So maybe try and use the space a bit more, which we did. And I thought they did it very well. And I think that teams realise now the way maybe to try and beat them is just a ferocious, ferocious intensity. But the killing thing for teams, in my opinion, lads, is it's trying to bring that ferocious intensity for 75 minutes. We brought it for 62 minutes yesterday. And I'll just fly down through it here. 62 minutes, 117 to 20 64 minutes, I just wrote tip tired. Reedy gets the point. 65 minutes, Hannon, super point. 66 minutes, Boylan wins a free. 67 minutes, Boylan scores the goal. 69 minutes, Tom Morrissey scores a point. 
70 minutes, Galan scores the goal. 71 minutes, we have a goal chance, but it's saved by Nicky Quaid. So I'm just saying, lads, we brought it for as much as we possibly could yesterday. If you want to be, if you want to try and go to 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 it needs to be a 75 minute frost intensity. I don't know, is there any team in the country that can do that, in my opinion? And Mark, they're hardly, like I commented on that as well, I think, to a few friends yesterday, even that their strength and conditioning, like you look at the likes of a Bylan, you know, he's been through the system. He's on the senior panel for a good while. You know, the Cahill O'Neill's never rushed in. I think he said this morning he won't be rushing the 20s in. Um, O'Sheen Riley has been knocking around that scene. You know, they, they just don't have to rush him in. And all the yeah. meantime, they're working on the strength and conditioning. They're getting stronger, faster. And that's why teams are struggling, maybe. And that's from a clear point of view. I'd be praying we get the three or four injured lads back. I think there's a lot of positive news out of the camp that looking like there will be two or three available maybe and Aidan McCarthy is back training so from that point of view you've been encouraged and the, the, the likes of an Aidan McCarthy he's a good few years on the inter-county circle but there's no one really to match him now Kenny traditionally we would have felt and then Shane's tip team I suppose and, but they're, they're way ahead in terms of the key yeah. 22 or 3 fellas and their yeah, level the, of yeah, of their, their fitness and, and their strength and conditioning so a couple of things there I would say Anthony um this didn't happen overnight with Limerick. So I remember being involved with development squad starting in 2011. And I remember talking to Decky Fitzgerald, I think, who was in Castle Troy uh, School at that time. And he used to tell me that um, the young lads from Limerick were coming in at 7 o'clock in the morning, whether they were 14, 15, 16, 17. One teacher would take them through their programs um, so they had a separate program for whatever age you were or whatever size you were or whatever you needed to concentrate on. And I think Limerick have, which both are way ahead of the game in terms of strength and conditioning. And that has come down to the likes of, I suppose, Joe McKenna in the background and resourcing the schools and getting the buy-in, obviously, from the schools and stuff like that, that you would get a teacher in the main schools in the county that would go in early to open up the facilities. And then obviously you get the buy-in from the parents as well that would drop their kids to school. So I think they made the decision that the school was the one place where they were going to be guaranteed that the lads could get the work done. Because if you left the clubs, I'd say 50% of the club members probably wouldn't accept that strength and conditioning was a part of the overall package in terms of GAA. And now as we, we can see the fruits of their labour, they are now physically... Uh, the biggest team in the country. And they're also very mobile as well. But they obviously have done a huge amount of the proper type of conditioning. Whether there's anybody there to match them, Anthony, I, when I look at Waterford, I think they are physically very strong. I mentioned last week to you yourself that I thought Clare were very strong as well physically. And I did question, we have a full-time strength and conditioning coach appointed in Cork a number of years back. And I'd have to say I don't see a major part of the fruits of the labour. You questioned me about Alan Connolly, and I forgot to say it at the time. Black Rock are the biggest and most physical team that's in Cork at this moment in time. And maybe it is the strength and conditioning that Black Rock are doing is that Alan Connolly is making the um, is making the inroads. And so I think there's a lot of question marks. And I'm sorry, I, I don't want to be deflecting away from your question, but Cork has some questions to ask, answer there. But I think it's all about Limerick in terms of their physicality right now. And like, let's, let's not deflect away. You know, it's not just physicality as well. They're smart. They're really attentive. They, they, you know, I, Shane mentioned about them sticking to the game plan and going through the process and all that. Like, they are an excellent hurling team as well. And let's not just – it's not a power game. It is skill as well. It's hurling. Like, Garrod Hegarty in the all Ireland semi-final and final last year hit seven points apiece in the matches. And they weren't from 25 or 30 yards out. Some of them were struck from 60, 70, and 80 yards. So their hurling ability is brilliant. And Tom Morrissey, for a guy who didn't play so well in the first round, ended up getting out in four or five points from play yesterday. Again, he's a quality player. He was one of those lads, along with Keen Lynch, Barry Nash, Sean Finn, that were on that development squad, Anthony, that I worked against. They're quality, quality. I mean, Finn is just an... He's a joy to watch. He's a fantastic player, like, you know. So I think kudos to the Limerick County Board and the people 
around this background and that scene there, unheralded people that you'll never see it. John Coyle and Ken Arker out the front, front of the house. Everybody knows those hustlers. But there's a huge amount of work going on in the background, people that you'll never hear about. And that's what's bringing these players to the fore. And they have been there for a long time, obviously, but to be able to stay there as well is a great tribute to Limerick. Yeah, and um, yeah, I could vouch for that, that, that there's loads of great volunteers, like absolute willing to put the shoulder to the wheel. I suppose dreamt about getting Limerick to where they are now. Um, look, I suppose I was accused of being biased in the commentary. I, I don't think I was. I thought that Tip got more of the 50-50 calls, if you like, and I think the free count would bear that out. No, I thought it was a bit more focused, maybe, which was welcome on the spare hand tackling being clamped down on. And maybe that's where Tip got two or three extra frees that they wouldn't normally. But I couldn't really give a shite for either county, to be honest, which I worked with Limerick for three years. But <laughs> Limerick were nearer to us than Tip in my life, this castle I'm from. So, look, <laughs> I admire Limerick great champions. And look, you know, four All Ireland's, um, you know, and going for a fifth one. and Unbelievable, really, like the work that has been done. So, if that comes across wrong, the big talking point, I suppose, Liam Gordon, I felt did his best ever going. Like, this is the one I suppose most of the stick was dished to me, but I suppose the Sunday game lads agreed with me. The two lads on the panel, I believe, yesterday agreed that they'd have gone for a yellow card on the Aaron Gillan one and Ron Maher. I thought it was a good bit different than the one last year, which I'd have called out and said definitely the one on Carl Barrett should have been a red card. Um, down in Cork when, when the match was very firmly in Tip's favour. Um, and I thought this was different. I, I thought in the split second, as this is why I, I agreed with the ref, that he was going to let rip and he'd have been definitely, because I could see the run and was just about to get there first. And I said, oh, Galen has gone here. like. But I thought he pulled back. And that's why I thought it was minimal, the contact. The hurley did go in with one hand. It was blown out of his hand. That was my take on it. I suppose... He, do, he, he lives on the edge, I suppose. So some people straight away will be thinking back to last year and want the red card demanded. And, and it's split. Does Brian Gavin today in his piece said he would have issued a red. A um, couple of refs I was in touch with yesterday, even inter-county, even with just text messages and that, would have said wrong, Dale, or red card. And so, like, it's opinions, I suppose. That's all. I was just given my opinion, and that's all. Um, yeah, I, I think Shane's going to touch on the exact rule in a second, but... I, I have to say on this occasion, Dale, I'm agreeing with you. I, I don't always agree with you, but on this occasion, I think you called it right. I, 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 I think I know you a, would on this occasion. For a fraction <laughs> of a second. Live, I, I did think that he might be in trouble, but looking back on it afterwards, like there's no doubt he, he, he eases out of it. Like it, it, it is a little bit loose, whatever you want to call that, with the hurley. Um, it's definitely a yellow card. Look, I did think Liam Gordon had a very good game. Um, I... I, I Last night, had a chance to see the game fully back. There were instances on both sides where you could have thought that maybe there was a little bit of holding or maybe there was a little bit of whatever. I'm, like You could have had a free either way. But I think in general, the game has gotten very difficult to referee. That spare hand is tricky. But overall, Liam Gordon had a good game. I thought he didn't panic. I thought that most of the decisions he got right in the day. And I think looking back on it, he'll be happy with it. The incident itself to Gillan, like Gillan has just been on fire. Like I, I think that we all go to matches and we wear the glasses of the team that we're supporting, and we always see things from our team's point of view. There's no doubt about that. Like, there was limit people behind me roaring for freeze nearly for every single instance, which wasn't a free. Like, and that just is part and parcel of the GEA. That creates the atmosphere and the buzz around the place. But <clears> and I, I think that he got it right. I, I don't think, looking back on it, that it was a straight red card. I think, I think the yellow card was also I, I, I will... Stick up for you. I think the Tipperary people have been hard on you on this occasion, and Congrats. I think that you, 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 you were very, very fair. As I said, I couldn't give a shite to just to be I I'll live on, but yeah, some of the personal stuff, like you know, I think you know, I, 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 I think some personal stuff back, like so, you know, just look at this water off a duck's ass, really. <laughs> then it was a vital time, I think there was a point in it, yeah, to tip, <laughs> and uh, if he did see red, um. Might yeah. have been the little kick on the, the tip because he was obviously very influential in, in the overall t- scheme of things as well. So, yeah, yeah. Your and take he's, on it. he's having a, he's having a good old battle with his club mate there for her year at the moment. Um, mm. In my opinion, um, I think there was uh, just have it here. 
56 minutes gone, I think. And uh, that's that's when it happened. We were, I think, tip were after on the ascendancy. We were after hitting three bad wides as well, lads, um, which you just really need to be taken as well. Um, Kyle, Kyle, there was a great hook on Kyle Hayes just before for a goal chance. Um, the most skillful cornerback in the game at the moment, Barry Nash, had just scored an unbelievable point. So it was it was a very very, it was a very very important time in the game. No more so in the must final last year. Here's my take on it, and I agree with what TJ says. Right, there was maybe three or four tip people sitting around me: my brother, my wife, and my brother's girlfriend. And in real time, your reaction as a Tipperary person, because it's Limerick, because it's Aaron Galan, and because it's so close, is red card has to go straight away in lifetime. All right. And I suppose that's where being a ref is hard. You know, you're you're in a ref, and you're, you're a ref. You have to call this in lifetime. And I, I, I think the fourth official gave more time yesterday telling the boys to sit down on these little fold away seats rather than maybe I think the fourth official should be concentrating more and help out some bit in these kind of things. He just gave the whole he gave the whole day. Gnorth Paul Canork tell him to sit down. Gnorth Paul Curran and John Henry tell him to sit down. Maybe his time should be more focused on what's going on and try to be an extra pair of eyes for incidents like this. That's my opinion on that. So when you look back, when on real time as an opposing fan, it's red card. But when you, when you look back at it and when you see it again, it's a missed time pull, to be honest. Like, okay, if he connects with the ball, it's probably going more back towards Barry Nash than it is towards the Tipperary goal. But if he really, really wanted to do damage, he would, the two hands would be kept in the hurley. The hurley might have gone in half. He actually released the release one arm, rele- nearly released the hurley for a finish. So because of the pace that Ronan's coming in at the ball and because of Aaron is coming across, Ronan's coming in, the opposing player's coming in at pace. He pulls, he's going for the ball. So therefore, and as I said, spoke to a referee last night. He's very particular about the rules, this fella. If anyone knows the rules, it's this guy. And he said under rule five, um, it's a yellow card and the rule five is aggressive fouls and it's 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 uh i'll tell you now lads look this is the organization for you there look see that there look highlight and everything for you okay rule 5.5 to make a pull with the hurley from behind and around the body of an opponent that is not consistent with an attempt to play the ball or to use the hurley in a careless manner and that's that is a category one related infraction so it's a yellow card i think that falls under that anyway for me lads and that's as a tip person but look in real time yeah you say the red because that's what you want you want the other team down. You want an advantage for your team. But when you look back at it as a hurling person, it's a yellow card. It's, it's, it's Aaron Galan, lads. I think that's where the thing comes from. It. His reputation precedes him. He's in hurler deer form. We want him gone off the field. Of course we do because we want an advantage. But as a hurling person, it's a yellow card. And it was, it was the right decision made. And I agree with you, TJ. I heard the, ref, I heard the freeze count afterwards. It might have been a bit leaning towards it. But I, I did think Lean Garden had a good game there yesterday. I think he helped to create a good game. There was lots of physicality in it. I, I, I thought he I thought he did a good job there now yesterday. Yeah, I think Dale as well, the um, the fact that Limerick obviously had a large number of supporters where they kind of just went quiet and left Liam do his job <laughs> rather than if you had, let's say, let's say, for example, 10,000 tip crowd. Yeah, but let's say it had been Cahill Barrett who pulled across Galan at that particular time when the game was on, right? <laughs> and now you've 25,000 people <laughs> worn at Liam Garden. I think the pressure would have been more on him. But I did think with most of the instances yesterday, I thought he dealt with him well. I thought he had a good game and you can certainly be satisfied with it. TJ, yeah, the one thing I can say to you, if you don't mind, as a Limerick person, right? And now I think, and I've always said this about Canorca and your management team, I think if there's any advantage to be got that Limerick are the best at getting it, no matter what it is, and I, I, you, you, I'm, I'm so in so much admiration for them at this. I think you've got another trick there now, right? I think there was a few injuries yesterday and the medical team went in or a couple of medics guys. There was a bit of spray put on and the lads continued. So I think there's messages going in and I'm not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying kudos for thinking of it because... He's oh, Dr. James Ryan. With the, with He's Dr. James with Ryan. Oh, no, hold on now a second. If you were there yesterday, lads, it two or three times went in, bit of magic spray, right. the game goes on. A so I think if, if they're using it, if they're using it as an advantage, the mere foreign thing is gone. I think fair play to them. But I think it's it definitely well, was happening. It was discussed in the McGrath brothers WhatsApp group last night, you know. So okay. You well, in, in, <laughs> in fairness, anybody who knows uh, the doc, Dr. James Ryan, brilliant character. Loves his Limerick hurling. And, you know, I think over the last couple of years, I think maybe when John or Paul sit down to write their memoirs, I think there, there is rumours that the doc did definitely try to make one or two changes that he saw on the day. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I do believe on one particular instance, 
I, I, I think I stand corrected on this. I think the manager had to tell the doctor to sit down even because he was trying to make something happen. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. he is very influential. But in fairness yeah. to them, I will agree yeah, with you. I think it did, the, the, not an, the allegation might be that they are getting the instructions in that the Moir Forna wasn't getting in. Say, as sure as Brian Cody is not getting in at the And I saw, I saw it written as well over, over the weekend. I, I have to say that the Mayor Forna thing we've, we've bandied about and I'd be, I'd be all in favour of bringing the Mayor Forna back. Like, oh my, oh my. I suppose it, the reality is, right, like people are mic'd up and hurly carriers and trying to get messages around the field. Like, right, that, that's, that's what you do as a management team. You are looking for the 1%. And if you can oh, yeah. get a message to somebody and if you see somebody, something structurally that might help or to get a message to somebody, that's what you've got to do. And you spoke about Willow Dunahoot coming out to the line. Now, whether he came out or whether he was just beckoned or whatever, just to make that little structural change, like 10 yards this way, 10 yards that way, can make a big difference. And that little bit of advice at the right time, whether it comes from the doc, whether it comes from the manager, yeah, can be make all well, the difference. Yeah, I'm I'm all for it. I think it's an advantage that yeah. Yeah, that has been seen, and it's they're taking they're they are using it. I think fair play to them. That's that's actually that's on, on a separate note. Do you know that the doc yesterday for the Tipperary team, Doctor Paul Ryan, is a Gary Spillane man and is a neighbour of me, my, mine at home. He's a, he's now a doctor in in Torres and has been for a long time. Uh, doctor Paul Ryan would have hurled midfield for Gary Spillane back in the day. There's another yeah. FYI for you guys. You and I think on. the Limerick physio that, that's always in the field is a tip man, Jan. He is, yeah. He would have been a big, would have been a big rugby man. Um, okay. back, uh, Mark, big Melbourne, huge, yeah. Mark Milburn, he, I think he would have been involved with Gary Owen. Now, I don't want to be saying the wrong club yeah. there now. So, but he would have been a big rugby man. Yeah, get Mark, yeah. So, yeah, he'd be obviously very well respected sports person as well. Like, so, but look, I think it is, if it's an advantage and you can use it, use it, lads. We, Brendan Murphy, involved with us, top hurler for Offaly for a long time. Mm. You know, if he came in and sometimes he might say something to you, he mightn't have been told to say it, but... I think I think every advantage has to be used um, nowadays. Do I need stitches, Brendan? No, but pick up your men. <laughs> <laughs> Marco, a red card, not a red card. Yellow card, hot card. Uh, um, yellow card for me, Dero. But watch this space because I think Galen is a Mac man now for the rest of the season. He might have been better off to pick up the red card yesterday because a bit like Garo Hegarty. He had got wrote his look for a long, long time until he got the red card. And I'd have to say, in fairness to Hegarty, he's a changed man. Because the amount of work that he's going through now, and he's excellent in terms of his physicality that he's bringing to the game. And there's fellas hopping off, Hoffman hurlies off of him left, right and centre, and he's not reacting. He is after learning his lesson. I thought Galan should have got a red card last year against Tip. I have a small feeling that he still hasn't learned his lesson and it could come back to bite Limerick down the road. But for me yesterday, I think he did realise that he was going to be a smidgen late if he continued with two hands and he went with the one hand. And I looked at the replay again. Everybody thought he hit, he, he hit Ron Amal's hand. He didn't. The Holly missed his hand and he only got the flat of the Holly probably into the tummy and stuff like that. Um, but it wasn't the red card for me. But I'd just be a small bit afraid for Galan down the road that he he might have his card marked there now. And he's walking a teen ice now, I'd say, with the referees. Hey, lads, you know, you know, you might know if it's better than me now, right? The red card he got in, in the National League, lads, right? Did, did, did Galan get a red card in the league? I've kind of theory. Yeah. So if you pick up a red card in a championship, is it different competitions? And, you, you know, sometimes if you get sent off twice in the same calendar year, does your suspension... Go no, well, because of it, or yeah. what's the story there? Um, and you be know that? that there in the background, will you? I'm just wondering, I'm the... just wondering Mark, because you're saying maybe it's coming. Let's say if he did get sent off and the suspension is double because the second red card in the calendar year, you're talking about him being gone, like potentially. Yeah, I yeah. feel him. We won't I, see him in Ennis the weekend. I, I, I just think he might be kept yeah. in the final. Mm-hmm. Was it, was, they're definitely, they're definitely in two in different. Was that on a second yellow? No. It was, yeah, but I'm just wondering, even though it's a red card, red card, in, yeah, yeah, okay. in the calendar year, yeah, what yeah, I'm, yeah, I'd, lo- yeah. I'd love to know what the story is. Let's. I thought there might have been something in that. Yeah, I thought there might yeah, have been my, something. And in that. my impression is the category of red card uh, carries more of a su- suspension chain. So okay, if it's just yeah. a, you know a normal red card, it's just a one match suspension. But if the category is different, it could take a longer suspension. Okay. Um, yeah, just with the performance, TJ, just your positives for you. We've mentioned the positives about for Tip. The fight was huge. The young lads were great. Noel was still 
unbelievable run of Maher back at full back and might have solved that for them for a few years. He's young. Um, so, and, and I think more of those 20s to be streamed in maybe for the Cork match now and you know, for people. But from, from a, a Limerick point of view, TJ Tot and Mark mentioned that there was real return to form for Tom at wing forward and the full back line again. Galan's form again, you know, I mean, this catches in behind these men. I, I know Jackie mentioned, as I said it in commentary, I just can't leave him in behind you like that. He's so knacky at it. And we could see Cahill pleading that he played his hurley uh, before the ball, but you actually didn't really. Um, he just kind of uses the body to sort of, he does wave the hurley all right in front to confuse the cornerback, I'd say, but he uses the body to kind of hoosh off and he plucks in at the last second with the left hand, I think, and he's. Once he catches it, there's no, he's gone. He knows he needs a little flick, just and, and uh, yeah, his timing is incredible. And you know, it's 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 a, it's a more difficult skill to execute than it looks. He he makes it look a little bit easy because of his timing gets the ball. But like in fairness to him, he's leading of the line, his movement. Like if he steps in front of you and he goes left or right, he's got that three or four yards. That's the problem. And sometimes he goes in behind to try and hide the run, and you're maybe trying to trying to lead from the front, and you know. In fairness to him, his overall work rate, and if you look at even one or two of the scores yesterday, I think there was one particular score that maybe Tom Morrissey got uh, where the ball kind of ran away from him in the first half mm -hmm. off his left. But if you look at the run Gillan made to come and support him and try and take the defender away, he does an awful lot of that work. So he, he's his value to the inside forward line in Limerick at this moment is critical. He's probably... The main man in terms of the scores. He possibly was man in the match with the goals and the scores and his movement again yesterday. I was a little bit surprised, Delo, with your call for man in the match. Mike is a great guy. Uh, he did a great, great game in the full back line. You can't be blamed for that. But no. I, th I thought that probably Barry Nash was maybe our best man in the full back line. I thought he was excellent yesterday. Um, I thought Garrod in fairness in the second half was excellent as well. But Galan has been brilliant. The, the couple of things, I suppose, the positives for Limerick, to get Shami Flanagan back in the field is a positive, and they'll want to maybe get more game time into him, I imagine, next week. Uh, there's more and more guys coming back. I think what Shane said about Conor Boylan, Conor brings something different to the table. He's work rate. He was very influential. His goal, he won a big free there again in, in, in the top of the right position. And even at the far side of the field, he's hunting down. And even against Watford, even though maybe some of the Limerick people might not be more very impressed with him, maybe his, his general play, but his work rate for the team, like Ty Borka had no influence in that game. What he was trying to do, he's carrying out a role to perfection for the boys. And that's why they, they, they really like him. But to go back to the question, Limerick getting these boys back, getting the qualification piece done eases the pressure a little bit and gives them a little bit of flexibility if there is knocks or bruises that you can take a chance with next week. I, I, I still believe in the, in the championship, given maybe where Clare's, um, let's say, position is and their ascendancy is, I think Limerick will still want to go to Ennis and, maybe, and, 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 and beat them and, and, and lay down America for down the road. I, I don't want him to be anything easy. I think the team will be along the same lines. You might have one or two knocks. But overall... John will be very happy this morning. Job is done in terms of qualification. He's more and more players like Peter Casey, like all going well back in June. Uh, Keane, it was Limerick's first time playing without Keane in a big championship match, I think in six years as well. And like, everyone will say that Keane is the heartbeat and he makes everything happen. Like Cahal O'Neill's form, uh, one or two, let's say, wides, maybe that he will tidy up on in time. But at a crucial time in the first half there when Limerick weren't going well, they all, Carl caught a big puck out, turned and swiveled mm -hmm. and stuck it over the bar off his left-hand side. Huge for a young fella. So the form of those guys, the Kyle Hayes factor, um, looking at him yesterday, like there's no doubt is that when he gets the ball and he's running straight at the goal, that's probably his strongest point. Having to come out, win the ball and turn and go back in may not suit him. Like So whether it's that centre forward or whether you might see him back in, 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 in a position of number seven in time, who knows? But that flexibility is there for them. They have loads of options going down the road. So the Limerick camp, I imagine this morning, Delo, will be happy that the qualification is done. Uh, certainly work to do. But as Shane said, isn't that just a beautiful position to be in, to, to be looking forward to the next couple of games? Uh, it sure is. And I suppose that's the, that's the landscape everyone is faced with. It's Limerick and then there's a gap. And I think we have a few teams then around the same standard. Shane, I'm just going to get your take maybe on this weekend. Just roughly what you're thinking in terms of the fixtures. I get the boys on Thursday night, so we won't waste up um, the valuable um, Marco time on on because it'll be good, no doubt. Uh, Waterford hosting Cork in Walsh Park, Clare hosting Limerick. 
and a huge one in Leinster, obviously the huge one in, in you know, yeah. it, Shane, it's the Dublin I was gonna say, and, Shane, one. Yeah. Before you answer, Shane, I'm right saying that if Waterford beat Cork at two o'clock on Sunday, the qualification is done. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it all yeah. done. Oh, yeah. Every, everything bare a, a Cork result is needed, like a draw or a win for any yeah. anything, for any glimmer of hope. Oh, a Waterford win, it's, it's game over, you know. And yeah. as we say, Tip and Cork are, are, are playing in the history of the Munster Championship, maybe the maybe the most pointless match they've ever played in Championship history to see <laughs> who potentially plays Kerry if they win the Joe McDonough. So. <laughs> What a way to be! <laughs> how do you see? Be, yeah. How do you see it going, Shane? Ah, uh, look, Cork. I think I, I think um, I think just from being at the Watford Limerick game the last day, I, I think Lin Cahill would have been happy with a lot of things, but I think he would have realised too that they just you know that they're close, that they're getting there all the time, um, getting Jim, Jimmy Barron and these lads back. But I think at home against Cork, they have to get a win. Like they have to get a win because. Like they're going, they're going to Ennis after that, like, and you just don't know the way things are going to pan out, like, with the with the Clare and Limerick game. So uh, I think there'll be a huge. Obviously, it'll be packed because it's handy enough packet, like you know, at the moment the way it is, um, top class field. So I think Watford will have learned a lot from the Limerick game, and um, I think you know, the likes of Carrick Daly and these lads will feel they've they've a big point to prove as well that they were on the team, off the team. They'll want to be cementing down the place now. They really, really will, like, because. You know, you've their second last game in the round robin. You could be talking about either being in the Munster final or being in the qualifiers and the chopping and changing the day of the time for chopping and changing is going. So I think Watford will do it. I, I heard more bad stories about Cork, but look, I know what it's all here say like, but about what's going on in training and we things get like the that. Proper sto- they're yeah, all we'll true, get the proper stories. They're all true, Shane. Yeah, yeah, get the anyway, proper so, stories yeah. in, the, in, I, the, in the sold out old bank in Dungarvan on Thursday night. Your yeah, man will have yeah. all those stories sourced. Yeah, check yeah, those, like, yeah, oh. yeah. So, um, yeah. You see, Fake you news. Might, uh, Watford might, win there at home. Yeah, I'll Watford win at home because I don't think Cork are, are, are playing for the management, in my in my yeah. opinion. Um, yeah. Watford win at home. And then... Dodge in Ennis. And in, in Ennis, I just think, I, I don't know, I think Kylie, um, there might be four or five players now, Dalo, that he might have, might not have been considered playing, but he mm-hmm. might play now as a kind of a, 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 a kick up the arse for him, like to say that it wasn't good enough against Tip and I need to see you again. So it, I, it, I think the team he'll put out will be the most, I think the Limerick team will be the most interesting what way they'll go about it. But Claire can't worry about that. And I think Claire are in a great place. I, I, I said it at the start of the... The start of the most championship. Your brother Donny will, will vouch for this, uh, TJ. We did a, a thing for St. Pat's one night. I said it would be Watford, Limerick, and Clare because of the geographic thing. I think two games in Turles. Clare like playing in Turles. Suits their game. And um, they just like they like the surroundings. We won't go into the size of the pitch because I know you, you, you all maintain that <laughs> music part is big. So um, it's full size on Sunday. No, I can full tell size you. Sunday, and I think uh, I think. Um, for the first time in a long time, and we've said this before, and you've said it a few times as well, is Brian Lohan can sit down with a pen and a paper and has 20 or 22 lads of the best hurlers in Clare that he can pick because of injury, lads away, sickness, whatever it might have been. And I think that is massive for Clare. And I think your first home game, Dalo, the place will be packed. Uh, rightly so. I think that the boys are, they must be buzzing in training for the last couple of weeks when they look around in an A versus B game and think, that there's two or three lads in the B team that they could easily see time against Limerick. And I think that's a great place to be in. So I think with all those things we said, home venue, Clare being at full strength, there's a great buzz going, albeit they've beat, they've beat Tip and Cork, who, who probably won't go through. They've still done what they had to do, and they've played well doing it. And that's all you can do. That's all the group want. You see the emotion in Brian Lowe on the last day, Jorgen Klopp like up to the crowd. You don't see that from him a lot. I, I don't see it from him a lot from the outside. I think everyone is behind them. I think the group are happy. I think they've everyone there, and I, I think Claire will beat Limerick um, in Ennis, in my in, in my opinion. Okay, fair call. Yeah, and I just about for that the, the, the old club Claire golf event, the Hinch Wednesday, Dunbeg Thursday. There's a buzz, like there is a buzz, you know. There's a support, and it was great to see Brian there, and we had a picture with him and all that, you know. So, um, huge hey, one, Leinster, then Shane. Huge, huge one. TJ, he's dead right about that, actually. There, but um, we'll discuss that for later on the week. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, huge one in Leinster, Shane. It could be a massive bearing, really, on, on the whole thing. Is Parnell Park. Now, I was up there doing commentary um, for the, the, I was the across, league game. I was, I was across the You were across. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you were, were in the posh, you were, you were you were in the posh press box. <laughs> it's just there was no show from the dubs and the cats no. came all aggression and everything. Surely no. has to be a bit of a bite back from the dubs, having got that Wexford win, like. 
Yeah, do or die. And then the Kilkenny lads won't want to be going to or waiting for Wexford to come to Nolan Park to, to guarantee it either, like, you know, but um I was I don't know. I was up I was up at Salt Hill, Galway Kilkenny, thought it was a great game, two teams went at it really strong. I was still looking at two teams, in my opinion, that are a bit behind the best team. Um so I think that there will be that there, there has to be a massive performance in Dublin, but I I, I can't see it there, though, like um to be honest, like I don't know, like this, this, they've struggled so far. Like they, they haven't found that form, like you know, that we were maybe seeing in patches of the league. I know they got the win against Wexford, but they made hard work for it. It, it wasn't good viewing, lads, was it really? That the Wexford Dublin game down in Wexford Park. Mm. And I just think Kilkenny are coming off the back of they'll feel so hard done by, and they feel the world is against them now because of a handshake or because of a referee's decision. They'll feel everyone's against them. And they and like have no doubt they'll be using that to say no one thinks we're good enough now, lads. Everyone is against us. They say it's our fault. They say we're sulking. They say we're we don't accept this. I mean, a great like the message, the, the buzz that they'll be on coming out in Parnell Park saying, Oh, we like you know, the Dublin do well in Parnell Park. Dublin don't do well in Parnell Park against Kilkenny. Um mm. down through the years. So I just think Kilkenny are coming all guns blazing. As I said, the world is against them. And uh, I'd love to know will TJ start. TJ yeah, the Kilkenny Reed, team, Shane, I was going to say that. That will be midfield, very interesting, TJ. Yeah, the midfield for Kilkenny and TJ, I suppose, that, that, that's that's the, the conundrum that they have at the moment. There's kind of a lot of chopping and changing around the middle of the yeah, field. I like the they were playing for most of it. I thought they were a little bit, maybe Cody wasn't kind of maybe over enamored with some of the short stuff. Or well, Murphy gave away a couple of scores. They need to tidy up a few bits and pieces. But I think if they get them right and they can, I, 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 I'd be going for Kilkenny. Yeah, so would I. Yeah, so would I. So I'll keep that until Thursday night, of course. But you, you, you have nothing now for Dungarvan. I have a couple I go, of stories. I go, I go to the live shows I, as well, lads. You know, don't I, I, feel, I, I, feel I, I, I have a couple of stories. Yeah. Just normally, if we were going to Dungarvan, we wouldn't be coming home. But I tell you, uh, Tony sprung it on us a bit late. Like, so I have to get back and have a stag party coming here on, on Friday. So, oh, let's um. Good. Great stuff. There's a few bits and pieces. Just down the grades, uh, Kildare again, r- kind of romping away with the Christie ring. Now they'll, they'll still have to go and win a final, of course, possibly against Derry. Uh, Ross Common and Donegal look to be Nicky Racker favourites. And then it's Longford and Leitrim and the Lowry. Um, th- th- that looks to be the picture. There can be a few twists there yet. Shout out, lads, to both Leash and Offaly in the Leinster Minor. Uh, massive results, Leash. Leash beaten Kilkenny, um, incredible, like, and probably huge show. Awfully great, comfortable win against Dublin. Won it easy, but there has been a bit of talk about this Offaly team. Yes, Leo's correct. involved with them, TJ, and you know it was talk that Limerick went up there earlier in the year and Offaly beat them well, and so they're fulfilling that. <coughs> it's a unique Leinster final. I don't know if it ever happened before with the two of them, but you know I think for Leash to beat Kilkenny is massive, and you know I, I just brings me back. I don't think. And then there's maybe a small bit of fallout with Cam- the, the Camaras Club and, and the Leash Senior Squad in the last few years. was so great to see there's five or six Camaras lads in there. And I always associate the great late team, uh, Leash team of the 80s when I was being brought off to watch Clare matches and Leash above in Rathdowney or somewhere was nearly impossible. And the likes of Pat Critchley, John Taylor, all these great players and they won All-Stars. And you'll see so many Camaras lads back because I associate them with the Cuddies, PJ Cuddy, Martin Cuddy, what warriors they were, and uh, you know, so I think that's brilliant for hurling. We've been crying out for something like that, you know, Claire in the minor final as well, I think, which is a great lift for us because obviously minor looked uh, doom and gloom in Claire last year, so we're in that and yeah. we'll be hurling on after that. And so will Leash and Offley with the, with the system. I think it's literally what have we a left? Great in system, it now? great system, yeah. Dale, isn't it? For yeah. the younger, uh, my brother's involved with Tate, my brother Carmack is coaching him, Woody's the manager, and I think it's a great system. You're talking about, you know, Mark, you're always on about saying the development of players. I think it's brilliant yeah. for 16 and 17 year olds that it's not straight knockout and that even the Munster finalists get another crack at it. So we're on about developing players. Kudos to the GA for, for that system. I think the under 20s could maybe go. Could maybe go that way too. If if we if it is being called a development thing, not get him get him ready for the big big show that's coming down yeah. the line. I think it's a and great because Shane as well. Can, and, can I just say I think it's better than they're going into stadiums like that. There'll be forty thousand that maybe yeah. playing, and it's an awful lot of pressure on sixteen year olds. Whereas this way they're getting plenty games against lads their own age and their own peers, and they're learning on the job and they're getting a chance to play at the level and. Eventually, yeah. they will have a huge crowd for a monster final. I presume there'll be a great crowd uh, this week. And 
again on from that. You know, if you're making all Ireland yeah. semi final and Ireland minor final, so yeah, yeah. It's no, good, very good like, system. I think you know, it's, it's, it's very important for the likes of Leach and Offaly that you get a belief that if you put the structures in place and now when you know where the bar is to get a team to a Leinster final, it gives, like, let's say, a huge belief in the next group and the next group you're trying to get them up to that group. But there, I will say one thing. There's something beautifully structurally mad about the under-17 and under-20 competition overall, right? Here's a couple of stats, right? So the 17s is round robin and both teams in the provincial finals qualify. In the under-20s, uh, Galway play in Leinster, but the 17s don't play in Leinster. In the under-20s, the two teams that get to the provincial final, they don't qualify. It's just the winners this year. And in the Munster under-20 championship, there's a form of a round robin. And in the Leinster under-20 championship, it's a knockout. Like, where, where, where would you get that? In same, any same, like? same, same, but different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, happy. we're happy with the, the 17s anyway. And look, we'll wish both of them. Yeah. The very best of looking is next Good win Saturday, for Limerick in the 20s too during the week. Um, that was a good game, actually, Shane. Oh, yeah, uh, Limerick good and Tip. Game. Yeah, very good, good, good hurling match. So, yeah. yeah. But four, four or five guys, I think, will will make a big step up. I was lucky to be involved with them in, in the minors. Um, I just oh, think yeah. that the little bit of class, and I know the players you were missing too, TJ. Obviously, Cahill O'Neill is the standout guy, but the, the other two guys you were missing too. Um, I would make a big difference to you, but uh, look, there we go. I think we've all agreed here that that rule is ridiculous, like, isn't it? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Cahill doing hurlies, like you know, you think about you're yeah. punishing less for being good, like, aren't you? Watching all his yeah. mates winning once or twice, yeah, like, you know, that's, just, that's good. Of, no, and shout out to Derek as well, who's often with us, who's involved at Leash, and I'm, no doubt that Derek is putting his stamp on, on that. So that's great for them to be looking forward to that. And uh, I think there's no fantasy results in Larry this week, is there? I don't think uh, Kyle had time there to get on my beat. Man, oh, Jesus. What's, what's this? This is a horse. Oh, oh, oh the literary. Let's go oh, for fantasy. Fantasy is in, yeah. TJ is going well there on the overall. Uh, John O'Connor is going seven. well by John O'Connor, 283. John O'Connor is what? 309, TJ. 309, like I'm up to uh, seventh overall, and we've had we've looked we've looked at the next phase of the structure. We're sitting pretty overall in the championship, happy. So we Family. have a couple of big moves to make. This is a moving week. You can make your couple of changes this week, Marco. You're up to three per county, but you have to be very cognizant of the fixtures coming up. Limerick only have one game. Then you've got monster final appearance, points, everything. So lots to think about. But yes, happy with the championship performance so far. Yeah, fair play. Um, I mean, TJ, TJ, your the championship form is starting to come true with you now. In fairness, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's the oh, here's, uh, yeah. our own um, yeah. Super League. Um, TJ streaking away seven nine five. Liam uh, hanging in there seven eighteen. I still on the podium. Shane, you're up my ass there. <laughs> yeah, Mark, you're you will you're I'm over six hundred. I'm oh, slipping down. I can't believe I'm Shani McGrath is just on my tail at the moment. That's some <laughs> yeah. and, and it looks like the, the, the wooden spoon will be staying in a 3.4 million man- mansion somewhere in South Cork. Like <laughs> Blackrock Road. Cads, you, know, <laughs> Cads, you want to make a few changes there, kid. Cadigan, <laughs> Cadigan must be picking himself on the team, is he? Yeah, John McCarthy is gone, <laughs> Cads. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he down there? I'm looking at from there. Uh, Evan Nyland didn't get much of a game I'd have to take him out Kedding has yeah. Ke- Kedigan has Joe Kenning on the team and a few more lads retired Paddy yeah. Maher a few more of them probably no the him. he's himself he's himself playing I'd say himself is yeah. captain and yeah. 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 Just, the Jason Ford was a big blow to us all and then oh, TJ yeah. had Noel McGrath like so I think that's the big difference he's a shrewd man got a right? break there from Paris he did he did he did got a- Got a break. Well done, well done. Um, and well done, TJ. Come on, racing lads is up and running nearly officially now, Marco. I let you tote yourself and TJ take it away there, even though I'm the cocky of luck. Uh, yeah, Mr. You're Chairman. all over the country there, the two ye. Another road trip. I couldn't attend it now, uh, but I'll be back on them road trips very, very soon. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it wasn't the same without the chairman, but we had to, I mean, the two agents had to go, and we were able to get the secretary on the phone, Mr. Patrick Mulcahy, so... We had to get his words of wisdom. He gave us a bit of a telling off as to what we were to be doing and stuff for that as representatives and agents of the command racing. But delighted to uh, be invited again to Jim Balder's last Thursday. And we met the great Patrick Mullins afterwards. And that was, I must say, the two stables are brilliant. But to get in and get a walk beside Aloha 
and see Classical Dream and Ellie Mae. It was like a kid being in a candy store, I'd have to say. So um, we 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 have colours as well, Dalo, and you we have pictures. pictures. You got a picture of Hello, did you? No, 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 not too, no. We, we couldn't um, couldn't get Alaho. Yes, um, we just we were of kind of we were in awe. I would have to say, and we didn't I, want I, to be upsetting the beast. No, I got I got a picture of Alaho. He's to be honest, but he's one of the biggest horses I've ever seen. I think Patrick said he's something like seventeen one or whatever. He's the biggest feet that I've ever seen in a horse. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. In, in, incredible with some horse. Yeah. Oh, oh, you, 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 sorry, yeah, yeah. Go on, yeah. yeah. Great day out, Marco. Uh, great fun as well. And in fairness, uh, we had the old video cameras following us. So there's a couple of bits and pieces up there and, pe and people have a look. So we, we definitely had an enjoyable time. And in fairness to Jim, again, re re really accommodating. But the main thing is the racing club is up and running. Uh, the emails have gone out to all the people. I think there's a couple of spots left just to close it off at 500. It's 200 euros for the year. We're going to have some crack here. Our, our first runner is running this Wednesday in Bourne wow. Park, 4.55, trained by Jim Bulger. If you check the fixtures or the paper tomorrow, you will see that the horse Literatus is owned by the Come On Racing Club. So we are yeah. launched. We're ready for road. We're going to have a couple of more ambassadors. We're number seven there. Number in, seven. In, Can't go wrong. Your Josie Dale or by <laughs> Literatus. Yeah. And is he going well? What's the feedback? The feedback just, is that we, we're going to be very competitive on Wednesday and we're hoping to get this off to a flyer. But uh, no, things things going well. So we've two horses with Jim Bulger, one um, to be named with William McCreary and we have one with the great William Patrick Mullins as well, a uh, horse called Katie Tay, uh, all leased, all for small money here. Great enjoyment for the year. As I keep saying, and in fairness to myself and Marco, we actually ended up in Valley Ragged the other day. Right? <laughs> we were saying that the Come On Racing Club will bring us to places we've never been before. So none of us were in Valley Ragged before, and we didn't meet any uh, any stars or anything like that, uh, Marco. So we drove through. Great day out, Kept moving. Some great fun down the road here. So for the people who have signed up um, and got their memberships, uh, you can pay the subscription this month. We'll probably close it off the end of the month, Marco, and we'll be ready to yes. go. We'll have plenty of days out and invitations to go places and meet a few people. And we've got a couple of new ambassadors coming on board. So all watch this space. But Wednesday yeah. is take off. Wednesday, Wednesday is launch day. And two notable things this morning. Uh, Cyril Fall has just agreed to be a member and is ambassador as well and will be with, there with us on Wednesday. And Charlie Carter, his local track in Gordon Park, He's already after speaking to Eddie Scally this morning, the manager of the racetrack, and he's going to make the facilities available upstairs to the paid-up members of the racing club. So I suppose a shout-out to these lads. Get the membership paid. It's a bit like the GA club, do you know what I mean? We'd be calling on fellas, listen, we don't want to be getting lists and calling on fellas. You enjoy, just go onto the website, come on racing.ie, and away you go. Click on the buttons. Shane McGrath will tell you they'll just click the buttons. They're very simple. They'll offer you and me. We'd probably be handing over a couple of hundred euros or something to do it for us. But anyway, we'll get there in the end. But um, no, exciting times, that. exciting times ahead. And uh, really, really looking forward to meeting people that we've never met before and come up and introduce yourself because with, with 500 members, we don't know how many is going to be there on Wednesday. We know a short notice, but it's like in, in pure GA terms, we said we take the ball on the hop and run with it. So we're up and running, and, and best to look to everybody on it. And stuff, and hopefully we win now, it'll run well anyway, we'll be lynched in Dungarvan. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, look, sure, as we said, yeah. uh, it's going to be, we're in it for the fun. Uh, no one's going to make a killing on it, but it'll be great fun on it. So, and um, actually, Marco, before we leave the horse racing, I met some people yesterday that were complimenting you again. I know we can't be promoting gambling and all that kind of stuff, but and very, we're not. Very, very, and we're not. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. Well, we came up with another one, done. Lady Tilbury or something. Isn't it? Lady Tilbury on Friday. So well done to Marco That's again. Four day law now, kid. Four of them going, on the yeah. bounce. The, the drive for five is on. And you know what? It is very exciting because that's a, it's a buddy of mine, Jimmy Nolan, just, just rang me there six or eight months ago. He says, listen, there's an opportunity here. We'll, there's a few quid um, it bouncing around. David Moran is going to buy 20 yearlings and put them into the flat. A small few quid. A hundred people all over the world. We went out to Dubai in January and launched the, race, the mm -hmm. Moran Racing Club. And it was great fun. People met people from Luxembourg. Australia, America, Canada, Scotland, the UK, and, and back in our own Terma Firma, a couple of lads from Cork as well. So 
There was, unfortunately, I couldn't go at communion over the weekend, Dale. Charlie was at uh, did his first communion and like a shout Charlie. out to my to my brother in law, Martin, and his buddies, Liam Flanagan and uh, Fran O'Man, who did massive work on the back of the house, tiling and stuff like that. Just, and you know yourself now, Jackie, would be delighted to get the job done and have the place looking prim and proper for the first communion. So thanks, yeah. lads, for all the work. But we had a great day. But I, I, I couldn't attend on Friday night. But I was watching it as we were toiling. We, we took 60 seconds to watch it. But the exciting thing about this is that Lady Tilbury looks like that she could be going to Ascot. So for a horse that only cost 18,000 euros, she's probably worth north of 250 or 300 grand now. And the possibility of going to Ascot with the tops and tails, tops and will, tails. Be, will be some crack dealer. I can tell you that much now. For a small, for a small bit of an investment, so you have to, you have to, inv- you have to put in, you have to put it invest, you have to speculate to accumulate, Dela. Yeah, that's, 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 that's on your side, and sure, maybe Marco over the next year or two, we might get there ourselves. But anyway, see you all Wednesday. That's enough, no, enough racing for. That's for the message, week. absolutely. Yeah, I think, I think any, Shane, any progress? Shane has a couple of bits. Oh, a couple of small things, yeah. Thanks, lads. I, I was you know, looking forward, looking forward to getting racing with you boys and what happened <laughs> after the races as well, right? Uh, the, the community hall here in Ballina Hinchdale, you put up a thing for me before. They're having a summer of music raffle. You can win tickets to see Garrett Brooks, Westlife, Longitude, Cut Loose Music Festival. So if you're oh. if you see that link, guys, you might uh, give it a shout out for the Ballina Hinch. If you want hall. to include two tickets to five bands and a pig, I'll send them down to you as well. Absolutely, and we look forward to yeah, doing that again. But the Ballina Hinch crowd will we'll be back down to Marty's Dale. We had a great time there the last time. The other the other thing, guys, is look me singing Tipperary songs. Yeah, oh, absolutely, and so, I'll even sing it for all the doubters. That's, that's but that's what we're all about. Um, and just with the other thing, then I suppose we we uh, we 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 laid to rest a, a club mate of mine here at the weekend. Adrian Kelly was his name. Only forty one years of age. He's behind his wife Maria, his daughters Sarah and Emma, and uh, you know he's from a he's from the Kelly family in Killiscully. They're a great community family. They're a great GA family. Uh, he has four brothers. They all hurled. I think at one stage they all started nearly on the same team for us in the club, and that's just the way it is. And his his mother and father Tommy and Geraldine, but he was a member of the Garda Shiakana lads, and uh, they came out in force. There was hundreds of them there at the funeral at the weekend, and just what they did for him. And the, the Guard of Honour, I was never at a, a, Guard, of, a Guard of Funeral before, lads. And the way they do the Guard of Honour with the tricolour and everything, presented it to the family. And the bugler at the end, you know, geez, there, wasn't a dry, there wasn't a dry eye in the place. But, you know, God rest his soul. And I think the family would also, they did thank him. But I tell you what, lads, that Milford Hospice, you don't really ever have to want to go in there. But when you are in there, what a place it is. What an organisation. I actually got married in the chapel in Milford Hospice myself, lads. And what they did for us. They made us a wedding cake and everything. It was unbelievable. My wife's mother didn't, couldn't make the wedding. She passed away. We got married for real a few weeks later. But I just want to give a shout out to, to Adrian, his family, his wife, Marie, and his daughters. The Garda Shia Khan as well, what they did. I know we give out about them. We've been always driving up to checkpoints for them. But geez, they came out in force the other day. And obviously to Milford Hospice led. So just, I just appreciate uh, being able to, to say that there now. Thanks. Well said, Shane. Well said. And, and uh, I suppose, look, it's only at times like that that we realise uh, it's only hurling we'd be talking about. Um, you know, uh, very well said. And rest in peace. And uh, with that, we'll say over and out uh, for this early part of the week. TJ, you're not over and out yet, no? No, I was going to say, Dello, I will see you on Thursday for the live show. We'll, we'll, we'll tip on to Waterford and we'll pick the teams on the way down and we'll see it. And for take two for the week, I will see you in Ennis on Sunday. I'm on duty. I'm not on co commentary for anyone in Tipperary. So, if you want to travel, hi, if you want to travel early now on Thursday, there is an offer of a game of golf kindly sponsored by Kian Gleason, Admore Equine in the home of Seamus Powers Golf Club in West Waterford, if you want to tip along down early, lads. So mm. that is available to you, lads, if you want us. It's hard to, get, it's hard to be a or, leverage. Or maybe, or maybe, Dela, go to head Gordon to Gordon, go to Gordon Park, stay, stay over, and we play the golf Thursday morning after the breakfast, and then we rock on to the bank. Go now we're getting organised. Come on, Friday. Is it? you ask for sure. <laughs> It's like a rag. It's like a rag week for all lads. <laughs> that's exactly. That's exactly Shane. What is stop? Go on. Good luck, Good lads. All the way. See lads. Good luck. Gonna say he'll never get there. Hey, mama, on the TV is on. Come and love you, daddy, all night long. All night. And you? What do you do? Mm, it's a bit complicated to explain. Hey, hey.
know, I still didn't get exactly what your job is. That is what I do. New Renault Arcana E-Tech Hybrid from €299 Euro per month on the road. Winner, Irish Medium Crossover SUV in the 2022 Car of the Year Awards. There's a small bit of a needle there. Oh, come on, Mayo, you've got to get Andy Murad into the game. Or missing what the show? Or missing what the show? Then we're not.